Hello, and welcome to the Learn Kubernetes with Google video series. I'm Bob Killen, a Kubernetes contributor and program manager here at Google. In this video, we'll introduce you to the Horizontal Pod Autoscaler, or HPA for short. Now, if you're here, you're already likely aware of the many features and capabilities that Kubernetes can bring to your infrastructure application. It has built-in service discovery, it's self-healing, it can schedule and distribute your application across tens to thousands of nodes. And the focus of this short overview, it can scale your application to accommodate your workload's needs. As you know, a little bit of an example, let's say you have a website and you know, that site happens to host a popular cat picture or you know, a new meme, and you wind up getting an immediate surge in traffic to your application. In a traditional deployment, things would slow down, likely time out, and the folks visiting your site wouldn't have the greatest time. Now, in a cloud-based VM deployment, you could set up like an auto-scaling group, and so that would you know add more VMs as you know the you know general load increases. But of course, you'd also incur the penalty that's associated with VMs of a higher startup time and possibly like over-provisioning of you know those resources. The HPA extends the concept of the VM autoscaling group to pods and can grow or shrink your app to meet the ongoing demands of your service. The HPA is a controller that can scale most pod-based resources up or down depending on your application workload. It does this by scaling the number of replicas of your pod once certain pre-configured thresholds are met. And for many applications, scaling based on a single metric, such as you know, CPU usage, will probably be enough to cover your you know, basic application scaling needs. And we'll see a small sort of preview of this in an example. So here we have an Nginx deployment with a single replica specified. It also has been configured with a minimum resource request of 100 millicores. For the HPA to work effectively, you must specify at least a minimum resource request. This establishes a baseline that is used by the HPA to, deter to determine if a workload should be scaled. If no request is defined, the HPA will not take any action scaling the number of replicas you have specified up or down. So this means that our deployment with a single replica would be the only thing that would be handling all the load. So let's move over to the uh, associated horizontal pod autoscaler object. The scale target ref describes the exact object that it should target. This matches the API version, kind, and name. Moving on to the next part of the spec, you can see we've defined sort of like the minimum and max number of replicas we wish to establish along with the target average CPU utilization. This value essentially means we want to scale the number of pods to the point in which their average CPU is 40% of their request. So in this example, it'd be 40% of our you know, requested CPU of 100 millicores, so that, you know, be 40 millicores. Now, creating an HPA for your deployment is pretty easy and can be done with a kubectl command. The example here matches the autoscaling object above. And one thing to note, you can see like what we have here, it's using the V1 API, and it's been around for some time, but it's also pretty limited. The V1 API covers the basic use case of CPU, but often there are other potential metrics you would want to scale by. You know, maybe your application is memory intensive and you want to be able to scale it that way, or there's some other potential metric you'd want to use. In the V2 beta versions of the APIs, so this would be V2 beta 1 and V2 beta 2, target CPU utilization percentage has been replaced by the generic keyword metrics. It supports additional metric types, along with supporting scaling by multiple metrics at the same time. Here we have a few examples of a couple of the different metrics that can now be used to autoscale your application. You can see a few that like we expect, like CPU and memory, but there's also a new type, pods, and there's an additional type that, uh, well, honestly, I couldn't fit on the screen here. Uh, those will all be covered in um, future videos 
uh, so you can learn a little bit more on scaling your application up or down with the, you know those fun tools. With that, I hope you found this brief introduction to the horizontal pod auto scaler useful. And if you're interested about learning more about potential metric types that the HPA can use or other concepts in Kubernetes, check out some of the other videos in the series. I'm Bob Killen. Take care and enjoy.